Hey people, I hope you enjoyed the satellite film. It was really fun researching it with John Burroughs and James Warrow, and we found out lots of things. But there was one story that I didn't tell you in the film, and that's actually a personal story about the connection to a Russian satellite and my father at RAF Makarohanish. John Burroughs and others told me that something was transported by US Air Force up to Scotland. Scream, Scotland? Why? Oh, there's some base in Argyle, uh, Mac or something. Uh, that's where NATO... Hang on. <laughs> what? Yeah, it turns out that Macrohanish had a completely different role, and it makes so much sense of my personal family history than I thought. I mean, yeah, sure, the Aurora landed there. Yeah, I think it was used for experimental test aircraft. It's north of the island of Ireland, and it's a clear run over the Atlantic, and it's got a very, very long runway. But it also had another role, and I checked this with Nick Pope, obviously, XMOD. Yeah, absolutely. RAF, Macrohanish, was NATO's import and export centre for anything coming into the EU for NATO, mainly from the United States, or in fact anywhere else in the world. Anything coming in or going out went through Macrohanish. It was very easy to find. You can land galaxies, the C-5 American aircraft, big transport aircraft. And if this Russian spy satellite really landed in Suffolk, who knows? If it did, and it was taken to Bentwaters or Woodbridge, this is what we're hearing, it was given back to the Soviet Union at Makrohanish in 1981, early January, February. This is what I've been told. It crashed into Suffolk, <sighs> taken to a hangar, and the US Air Force and the British MOD went over it, took out the film, processed it, but also looked at all the electronics in this Zenit 2 spy satellite run by the Soviet Union. A LEO low Earth orbit and polar, so it goes around Europe and then over the United States. And eventually the idea of these satellites was to stay up in the air only for 10 to 14 days and then land in Kazakhstan or somewhere like that on the ground. Parachutes and things. You know, it, it, the Americans, as James Warrow said, used to eject canisters of film from Corona satellites and then they would float down and be captured, probably off um, the coast of Hawaii, uh, and the film would be captured by uh, entangling the parachute in a big net and then bringing it back and processing the film. The Soviets actually landed the satellites back to Earth and supposedly one was diverted from landing in. Kazakhstan to landing in Ipswich, you know, wherever it landed. Rendlesham Forest, of course. As the story goes, there was a big international row. The Foreign Office and the State Department and the Soviet Union were all, whoa, we want it back. So it was agreed that the Soviets would have it back at RAF Makrohanish. Now, here's the strange story. I'd already left home. I was living near Makrohanish with my parents. My dad is a senior... British um, civil servant, and and that's going to be the story. I was already at university, and my dad was still working. Uh, he's passed now, so I can't ask him if this is true, and he probably wouldn't tell me. <laughs> but he was the liaison officer for the British government with NATO at Macrohanish. Let me tell you how I know that. So he joined the civil service after a distinguished career in World War II as a tank commander in the Western Desert and then fighting up through Italy to Anzio and helping liberate Rome and do lots of things. After the war, he joined the civil service. This is 1940s. By 1980, he was a senior person to the point where he wasn't really having a small office in a rural town, he was actually, you know, going to be working in London and, you know, the main uh, department. But weirdly, he said to my mother and his two kids, I'm his son, that, no, we're not going to live in London, we're going to live in Macrohanish at the Mall of Kintyre. I was going, okay, so it looks kind of nice, I'll play on the beach. You know, I was just a young teenager. But Macrohanish is a village of, uh, what, 250 people? Why does a senior civil servant 
that should have been in an office in Whitehall be posted to a village in the Mull of Kintyre? I never asked it. You know, it never crossed my mind. He kind of said that he chose the posting. But of course, it makes perfect sense now. The RAF and NATO wanted a British government liaison person, and he spent all his time there. I mean, he was always on galaxies and talking about Hershey bars with me. But of course, he never said what he did. But he would have been there when this plane from Woodbridge took the spy satellite up to Makrohanish and awaited for the transfer. I suspect it wasn't a Soviet plane. It was probably a charter plane, maybe from Ukraine. Um, slightly inside information there. Landed at Makrohanish. The satellite was in a crate, forklift truck out of this hangar and exchanged to the Ukrainian transport plane. And we all waved goodbye to it. Well, I didn't, but my father did. So isn't that a strange connection? Of course, I have no way of asking him now. And, you know, as I said, he probably wouldn't have told me. But it's just possible that this story is actually true. And really, really strangely, it might have a personal family connection um, to my father. And I was like, OK. The truth is out there.